if you've got a mortgage coming up within the next 12 months i've made this video for you you get the benefit of having my 25 years experience within the mortgage sector and i myself have got a mortgage coming up so i've done some analysis i'm looking at some of the rates right now by loan to values some of the remortgage rates out rates out there looking at incentives the things you need to do the tricks you can do right now to get yourself prepared during and before the application right so i'll catch you on the video hit the bell icon so you you're informed when these videos do come out we've got over 11,000 subscribers now we've got 250 videos on our channel all to do with mortgages different types of mortgages so i'll catch you on the video Okay, my name is Payam and I'm a director at Niche Advice. As mentioned before, I've been a, uh, within the mortgage industry for the last 25 years. Uh, myself and my business partner, Richard, we set up Niche Advice about 15 years, 2007, 2008, just during just a little bit after the crash um, of the last crash but I was certainly working for a mortgage firm during the last crash and I will probably do a video on the last crash and how it's different and and some of the things that happened then and some of the lessons that we can learn but in this video I'm going to talk about remortgages okay everybody is looking just like me I've got a mortgage coming up in <coughs> March next year right so everyone is looking at all these news BBC and thinking what is it for me what when is my mortgage going to come up what am I going to do about it well let's look at some of the options now let's look at the loan to values so the best rates right now based on the loan to values okay so what's out there right now okay and then we can look at some of the products that are available and some of the tricks in regards to getting a mortgage, remortgage, staying with your own lender, and some of the uh, tricks the lenders may play in the future, some of the strategies that will happen in the future. So if you have got a mortgage coming up, I would say in the next 12 months, this one's for you. So let's crack on. Um, I've put the products here. Now, I got told off yesterday because I did a video on purchases and I didn't run through all of the sort of conditions on this, right? So these products were actually... Um, they were taken from our system, 27 Tech, which a lot of brokers use uh, at 10 o'clock this morning. Um, it's for a property purchase price, uh, not purchase, a property value of £300,000. I've actually included this time in the products, products with free basic legals and uh, valuation, okay? Because we're talking about remortgages, okay? And you're already going to be hit with a higher rate. So we're trying to save cost where we can. So I've included those within the, the products. It is just rate. It is not criteria related. So I haven't run through criteria. It's definitely not advice. For independent advice, obviously, you need to um, get your own, uh, uh, you know, get, get yourself, whether you contact us, contact lots of other mortgage brokers out there, but certainly tailor make advice is important also i've excluded things like new builds specific professional mortgages like key worker mortgages green mortgages and things like that right so bog standard but let's have a look let's have a look and see what we've got right so if your mortgage is coming up right now say next month or so um the first thing you need to do is obviously mortgage lenders uh, they'll write to you a couple of months before but don't wait for that. Get in touch with an independent mortgage broker six months before. I would say a couple of weeks before your six months, okay? The reason for that is you want to get yourself sorted out, get yourself looked at in terms of your affordability, what you can do, loan to values, right? And six months before that, you can apply for another lender if you wanted to go with, right? You don't necessarily have to stay with your own lender. Sometimes it makes sense uh, and the broker can have a look at the lender's existing product for you and compare it against the market. But it's not always best to stay with the same lender and unfortunately a lot of people tend to just go for the lazy option right but six months beforehand you can a couple of weeks before six months i would say you can get your documents ready you can put the application in the reason for that is mortgage offers last for six months okay so what happens if if the rates go high higher you've locked in on that rate six months ago if the rates go down, there's a potential your broker can actually contact the lender and go, do you know what? You gave me a rate at 5%. It's now 4.5%. I want that rate. And that's during your six months. So it's the best of both worlds. So lesson number one, do that, guys. Get in touch. Don't wait for your lender to write for you. Six months before, what you should be doing is running through your mortgage offer right now and seeing when your mortgage runs out, okay? Get in touch with your lender, right? So that's that. Now, You've got, you've got a couple of options here, right? So you've got the people that are coming out 
and they're thinking, I'm okay, my loan to value is okay, I can sit it out a little while because I think the rates are gonna come down. Um, so you, you can go for a variable option and the, the variable option is, uh, uh, you know, with no early repayment charge. So the variable option could be tracker rates, could be discounted rates, anything that doesn't have a penalty for you to get out of. So you wanna get in there and get out of. As I mentioned on my yesterday's videos, I think it's absolute suicide to go for a 95, 90, 85 even option with no early repayment charge, okay? Because let's say you do want to get out in a year's time, you may be sitting in negative equity. So it doesn't make sense for you to be on a rate that's going to go up and down. It's going to track something, whether it's the standard variable rates, the lender's discounted rates, or the standard variable rate. doesn't make sense. Really what only makes sense is, one, if you're going to sell the house, you're going to do something to it, you're going to you know, eventually may, maybe do an extension, you've been waiting out, you're going to do something that you may need to get out of. So that's a good option. And that I would go probably, you know, have a look at it 5.23. It's not pretty, the rate's not great. But you've got the flexibility of getting out whenever you want. Some people they want to say, well, I'm going to turn this one into a buy to let I'll put it on a tracker, I'll go and buy my, you know, there's, there's various options you can do. But generally, a lot of the people that want to do this is normally they want to do something to the property whether they want to sell the property they want to rent the property they want to do something to the property maybe capital raise later on they don't want an early repayment charge they don't want to be tied in so these are the rates for it nothing really fancy in terms of that i mean the 60 percent loan to value 5.23 i think oh one more thing these are rates as of today right they're going to change okay because i think a lot of the lenders got caught out i saw lenders like uh natwest a couple of days before yesterday they withdrew their products and they came back with new products with 30 basis points higher than their previous range. Well, already that's 50 basis points. It's gone up interest rates. So rest assured, they've got caught out because they probably thought it was going to be 0 0.25. They thought, well, we make a little bit of margin. So we'll go 0 0.3 and all of a sudden it's half. So I envisage these products changing. And that's my second point. These products are going to change. As soon as I send the quote off, it's going to change, right? That's why it's great if you can get in six months before, okay? So remember, because if they change and you've put your application in and generally the rate gets booked once the application gets submitted, the full application, not an agreement in principle, application gets submitted. So that's really important. Right, so let's go and have a look at the two-year fixes, right? So two-year fixed, okay, which is, you know, very popular, and I think a lot of people are going to hedge their bets and go down the two-year fixed mark. Uh, mark. Um, I've, I know uh, I know friends of mine that have actually just gone two-year fixed, and, and, and who knows, but, you know, look at this, right? 95% two-year fi uh, two fixed, 6.65 on a remortgage. Now, these have got free valuation, free legals, remember, right? So you're not paying for that. I would be worried if I'm sitting on a 95% uh, mortgage right now with uh, and trying to trying to remortgage. There's not that many up there, and I think they'll you know that's why that rate's reflected. 90%, you know, and then 85 at 5.39, 75 at 5 5.29. Not that much difference between look between the 60% and the 75% loan to value. So there are people still obviously that need to remortgage because they're doing an extension they're doing this they're doing that they may be going from a 60 percent loan to value to an 85 percent loan to value right so there's not that much in it okay there's not that much in it um on a two-year fix and the reason someone um, on my last video people were making comments of why are lenders losing money uh technically on on some of their rates it's because and 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 the specific question was about a five-year deal so let's talk about the five-year deal so you got five years now consistently lenders have repriced their pricing on a five-year fix lower than the two-year fix so the question that somebody had in my last video was why are they doing that well the reason they're doing that is a couple of reasons <coughs> why are they essentially not making that much money off the uh, the bank of england base rate well they have a couple of options one it's how they get their deposits Okay, so remember, uh, and I touched on this yesterday on Tesla's videos, if you go onto the Best Buy savings, okay, so savings accounts, if you wanted to get savings or savings bond, when you go to the best accounts, none of those are, as I would say, the big mortgage lenders. <clears throat> the big mortgage lenders, if you go to them, they'll give you pittance for the savings, right? So they're making a margin out of people's deposits, right? 
They're also making a margin because their price of fund costs are, are relatively lower than specialist lenders. And there's a lot of people that will take a five year fixed that would probably have to pay an early repayment charge to get out of. And they've probably done the statistics out there and they're thinking, right, we'll price the five year fixed because essentially they think three year three, maybe three year two, three, it's going to come down. Okay. But they, they have gone up considerably. You know, we were doing a few months ago, there were five year fixes at 4%. So um, under 4%, 3.99. So, um, you know, they, they've gone up, they've gone up, but, uh, uh, that's what it looks like uh, uh, right now on, on the different loan to values. And the next one is the 10 year fixed. There's no options for 95% mortgage, no options for 90%, no options for 85%. And there's a couple 75% and 60% on the, uh, on obviously there's 60% and 509 five year fix. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not convinced about the 10 year options. And I, I know there's been arguments that we should be going to the longer term model. But at the moment, it just doesn't seem like the way that the lenders are funded. It's going to go that way. So let's talk about what, what to do and what I'm going to do. My mortgage is coming up in March, right? It is a buy to let mortgage granted, but uh, I'm currently on a 204% rate that will jump to a, at least a five, six percent, right? So one prepare prepare if you can pay down to some mortgages great do so put some money aside um, now there will be things that are going to happen with lenders right uh, the, the problem that we've got is we've got a lot of people that are, for you to go to one lender to another lender you have to pass their affordability and affordability is tough because now the rates are higher so that's one of the advantages of staying with your same lender because those affordability checks are are waived with a lot of the lenders although we as brokers we still have to run affordability we still got to double check but you know if you're going to be better off by a thousand pounds the lender could see that and go well okay well you know we will we, we'll, we'll allow that for that to happen so product transfer versus remortgage is going to be a key point a lot of people are just going to go for the product transfer because it looks easier but you're going to probably lose that i've also noticed that the lenders product transfer for existing clients they've bumped those up now it used to be very competitive um, so it didn't really make sense for you to go to somewhere else go through the legals go through a mortgage broker go through whatever or deal with another lender a lot of set of pay slips bank statements and stuff but really you've, it's so dependent because lenders are tweaking those all the time right it doesn't cost the lender much money to offer you a new rate okay because they're not having to pay for their cost of acquisition however i've noticed those those creeping up so uh, it just depends on what type of lender you're with now there are going to be a lot of people that don't have that choice okay uh let me get out of here there are going to be some people that don't have that choice because you may have been with a specialist lender you might have gone with a self-employed type of lender because of your net income and various things right so we've got a transition uh, or, or you have to transition yourself to the high street you might have had adverse credit in the past you may have to transition yourself to a high street so there are lots of uh, strategies strategy one remortgage early go for it get some independent advice strategy two free valuation free legals are great however the legal side of things generally these lenders don't pay the solicitors that much to do the legal work what it means is their resources is quite tight so you've got to leave it plenty of time okay before your remortgage comes up for you to be take advantage of it there are some cashback deals out there whereby if you if you add them and you don't want to go down the free legals route you can you know some lenders will give you like up to 500 pounds towards your legal cost right but really what you want to try to do is bring your mortgage down have a look at the affordability you can play around with the term so when you come up with a remortgage you may be on a 20 year per term if you think that you're going to struggle short term you can go up 25 years 28 years 30 years depending on what it is so there are things you can do another thing that you can do which i'm i totally against i'm not a big fan of at all is is probably try to see if you can get an interest only mortgage for a little short term period i've had an interest only mortgage throughout the time where i was actually earning good money in london and i didn't do i didn't pay off i didn't pay it off um because i was just spanking the money out i was just going out all the time so uh, i'm not a big fan of interest only and unfortunately we've got many clients and i receive lots of clients that over the years they've been sitting on an interest only mortgage paying 300 pounds 400 pounds right and now all of a sudden 
their term's running out. That's the actual term, the 25 year term is running out and they're too old or they, they don't have the income. They, you know, when they did have the income back in the day, they should have gone on a repayment, but they just took the easy option. They went and bought themselves a BMW or they just, you know, could not afford it. Their income's from far. One of them got ill. So that it gets it gets messy if you go down the uh, interest only route i know the government may sort of is speaking to lenders to try to loosen things um they may tweak uh, interest only criteria they may tweak uh, you know moving the term things like that but i'm dead against interest only as in on a residential mortgage not on a buy to let okay buy to let's fair enough that's an investment and you're trying to do different strategy but for a um, unless unless you are a, like an investment banker and you say in all honesty why am I paying throughout the year, I don't know, £4,000 a month, okay? I want to pay £1,000 a month, but I get 300 k bonus at the end of the year. So why am, I, why am I trying to make ends meet? I know I know, men, ends meet is different for an investment banker, but there are people that will go, well, why am I just sort of just pushing myself in that when I'm going to get this lump sum coming? That's a different story, okay? So interest only is really for higher net worth individuals people that have got a lot of equity in their property uh, they've got good incomes generally a lot of lenders have got income limits around seventy five thousand. there are some that don't but yeah so the, the interest only element and i know short term it could be helpful i think it's good if we can get the lenders buying i think there's going to be some uh, mortgage interest reliefs and things like that potentially coming through but for you guys you know don't panic, right? And, and I said this in my last video. Don't panic. I've been through this before, right? There's no point panicking, right? What's going to happen is going to happen. Um, I think we've got a pain to go through. I don't think it's going to come down to 2% again. I think we're going to be probably sitting there uh, in the next two years at 3 4% interest rate. I think we're just going to be sitting there. Maybe 3 half, but then 3 half interest rate is probably going to be 4 on the uh, on the mortgage. So, you know, you've got to get prepared with that. I mean, it's not... It's not ideal, it's not great, but you know, historically, we've had interest rates of four and five. Yes, the difference is we've got a lot more debt now. Everybody's house is worth more, everybody feels a lot more richer, and everybody's probably refinanced more. Um, so, uh, you know, there are, there are things you can do right now. Like I said, look at the product transfer, look at your income profile. So important you look at your income profile now, you look at your expenses now, right? What's coming in, what's going out, have a look at your maintenance payments if you're receiving maintenance is it regular if it's regular it can we've got lenders that will take a hundred percent of it have a look at your bonuses okay are you getting them annually have you had them annually is there a way you can go down a monthly route because monthly a lot more lenders will take a hundred percent of incomes okay so if you receive commission bonus things like that it's always better to try to negotiate that now first of all negotiate your basic up if you can right but also what you want to do is try to um try to get these things if you can't get your basic up paid monthly rather than annually and quarterly right don't forget things like child benefit all of these type of benefits can be used for affordability adverse credit guys it's going to be tough right but please try to keep up payments with credit card payments and that mobile boy phone bill payment and things like that because these silly little things I, I see so many silly things with people that are earning good money they've got good things but they're, they're that you know they've they've closed their mobile phone and then they moved out and then rented somewhere else and they haven't closed that account and it's just showing as a 30 pound late payment that could stop you getting a mortgage that could stop you getting a mortgage because you could fail the lender's credit score and a lot of the lenders at the moment are actually tightening up their credit score right so you know keep up payments the bills look at your income outgoings um, if it's you know if you've got maintenance from children from the partner make sure you've got some sort of an agreement in place if it's court ordered fantastic a lot of lenders will take it um, if you've got uh, let's look at your dependencies here look at your expenses in regards to car finance and student loan debts and all of those things be prepared right that's all we can do right because these guys, they're, they're useless, right? There's no point relying on the government. There's no point relying on the lenders. There's no point. You've got to rely on yourselves and you've got to do your due diligence right now, okay? doesn't matter if your mortgage is coming up in seven months' time, eight months' time, a year's time, right? The things you can do now to get prepared doesn't matter because the rates will change, right? Products will change, okay? But you want to be in a position before you apply, you want to get everything sorted out, your bank statements, your pay slips. You know, guys, 
gambling debts, things like that. You know, I, the, I'm seeing a lot more of bank statements with like Betfred on it, right? Lenders don't like things like that. So you need to think about getting a mortgage in advance, okay? And get yourself prepared, get some decent advice, speak to a mortgage broker, an independent one preferably, uh, and then take it from there. I'll catch you on the next video. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.